Here we're going to begin looking at the notion of the derivative of a differential m form on Rn. So let's recall a few things. So let's say we've got omega, which is this sum over multi-indices capital I of F sub I dx sub I. Like I said, I is a multi-index. That means it's an M tuple. And all of those things are between one and N. So in other words, we have one is less than or equal to I1, which is strictly less than I2, all the way up to IM, which is less than or equal to N. And the F sub I's are differentiable functions. And this is known as a differential M form on Rn. And let's recall that it's got this two-stage evaluation. So the first thing that you do is you plug in a point from Rn, and that turns this differential M form to just an M form. And you generally call that omega P. And that is a multilinear map. And I should say it's an alternating multilinear map from the tangent space at point P of Rn down to the real numbers. And furthermore, these dxi's are described by this action. So we have dxi is equal to dxi1 wedge all the way up to dxim. And they have the following action on m different vectors from Rn. So dxi1 wedge all the way up to dxim evaluated at these m vectors from Rn gives you the determinant of a certain m by m matrix. So the first row of this matrix is given by the first vector with the components i1 up to im. And then the second row of this matrix is given by the second vector with those components and so on and so forth. So in the end, you have an M by M matrix and you can take a determinant of a square matrix. Okay, so our goal for this video is to define some sort of derivative which takes us from the space of differential M forms on Rn to the space of differential M plus one forms on Rn. And we're gonna start looking at what it would take to go from zero forms to one forms. And we really wanna think about these as differential zero forms to differential one forms. So in other words, given a zero form, which is just a function, so let's go ahead and write that. So a zero form, in other words, a function on Rn, so we'll just call that F x1, xn, we really want to answer the question, what is df? Good. So what should the notion of the derivative of this zero form be? So first of all, we need it to be a one form. So let's go ahead and write that down. df is a one form. And that's because our goal is to create a one form out of the zero form. So we're given a zero form, which is this function, and we want to somehow construct a one form out of that in a nice geometric way. Okay, so good. And so number two is how can we evaluate this one form? So let's just go ahead and write that. So how to evaluate. So in other words, we'll say some point from Rn, and then let's say we have some vector in TPRN. Because remember, if we've got a one form, it's got a two-stage evaluation. You first put in a point from Rn, and then you put in a single vector from TPRN. Because over here in the general case, you've got a two-stage evaluation on an M form, first a single point and then M vectors. So now let's like look at this for a little bit and think of some nice geometric thing that we could do given a point in Rn and a vector in Rn and this function related to the derivative. And if you sit around and think about it for a little bit, you realize you've probably already heard of this and it's the directional derivative. So let's go ahead and write that. So what I mean by that is if we take df and then we evaluate it at p, so that's our first stage evaluation, and then we further evaluate it at v, so that's the second stage of evaluation, what we should get is the derivative in the direction of v, 
of f evaluated at x equals p. And we've got actually a nicer calculation formula for the directional derivative, and that's using the gradient. So the directional derivative in the direction of v of f at the point p can also be described by the gradient of f evaluated at p. So I'll just put that and then dotted with v. Okay, fantastic. But now what we can do from there is expand that. So notice that's exactly equal to partial f with respect to x1 evaluated at p, but I'll go ahead and leave that out for now. And then times v1 plus up to the partial derivative of f with respect to xn times vn because that just follows from the definition of the dot product. And there we've got the gradient is given by the column vector of these partial derivatives, and then V is given by the vector V1 up to Vn. Okay, fantastic. Now the next thing that I wanna notice is our elementary one form dxi acts on vectors and just pulls out their components because an elementary one form is essentially giving you the determinant of a one by one matrix formed by just pulling a single component out of a vector. So now I can rewrite in that in that language. So this is the same thing as the partial of f with respect to x1 dx1 evaluated at v. So let's talk our way through that. So dx1 forms a one by one matrix from the first entry of v and then takes its determinant, but the determinant of a one by one matrix is just the number, so that gives you v1. And then plus all the way up to the partial with respect to xn of dxn evaluated at v. Good. And so now if we look at the extreme left and right hand side of the equation, we have some sort of feel for how we should define this df operator. So notice this df operator can logically be described as this sum of elementary one forms built by the partial of f with respect to x1 dx1 plus all the way up to the partial of f with respect to xn dxn. Great, so let's start with that at the top of the board and then we'll move on to a more arbitrary. So far we motivated the derivative of a zero form, in other words, a function, and we said that df, where f was that zero form or that function, is equal to the partial of f with respect to x1 dx, where that's the elementary one form, plus all the way up to the partial of f with respect to xn dxn. And again, that is another elementary one form. Now we want to say, well, what about a differential m forms? And we'll do this term by term. So I'll start just by defining what happens to fi dxi. So we're essentially just taking a natural extension of what we saw right here. So let's go ahead and write this down. So if we take df um, dxi, so let's read this. So this d is the operator, this exterior derivative, and this dxi is our elementary m form on Rn. So this is going to be equal to the partial of f with respect to x1, dx1 wedge dxi. Good. And then plus all the way up to the partial derivative of f with respect to xn, dxn wedge dxi. Good. And so that's kind of a natural extension of what we did up there. And then after that, we can define d omega just linearly. So in other words, we'll define d omega as this sum over i, and then the sum little j goes from one to n so that we can collapse this into some more compact notation. And then we have the partial of f sub i with respect to xj, and then the elementary one form dxj wedge this elementary m form dxi. And so notice this most definitely gives us a differential m plus one form if omega itself was a differential m form. So we have our goal, in other words, so let's go ahead and just write this down. This is a differential m plus one form. 
again, given omega is a differential m form. Okay, so let's go ahead and clean this up and then we'll do kind of a general but small example. So let's look at a general but fairly small example. So let's say we're working with differential forms over R3. So we have choices of zero, one, two, or three forms. And zero forms are just functions. So in other words, let's say we've just got a function, I'll call it F. And then we can take the derivative of this function. And this is this special like exterior derivative. So df. So in this case, this will be f sub x. So I'll use that notation for the partial of f with respect to x just to make it a little bit shorter. And then dx plus f sub y dy plus f sub z dz. So where dx, dy, and dz are just the elementary one forms. And so now let's say we've got a one form, we'll call it alpha. And so that means that's going to be a sum of f dx plus g dy plus h dz, where f, g, and h are differentiable functions of three variables, x, y, and z. And then these are the elementary one forms. Okay, so let's see what we can get for the derivative of this. So d alpha in this case will be f sub x dx wedge dx plus f sub y dy wedge dx plus f sub z dz wedge dx. So that's what we get from running through all the f parts. And then from running through all the g parts, we'll have g sub x dx wedge dy plus g sub y dy wedge dy plus g sub z dz wedge dy. Good. So that's what we get from running through all of uh, the derivatives of g. And then finally for h, we'll have h sub x dx wedge dz plus h sub y dy wedge dz. And then finally plus h sub z dz wedge dz. Now we'll use the fact that this wedge product is anti-commutative. So that means we have things like dx wedge dx is going to be uh, equal to zero. And then dy wedge dx will be negative dx wedge dy. So let's go ahead and write that down. So dx wedge dy, because there's some sort of canonical order for these things. And then also this guy is going to be negative dx wedge dz. And then this dy wedge dy will be zero. And then this guy will be negative dy wedge dz. And then finally, this guy dz wedge dz will be equal to zero. And so now we can go ahead and combine like terms. So notice that like this term right here and this term right here are both attached to dx wedge dy. So we can write that as g sub x minus f sub y dx wedge dy. Good. And now that we can keep going. So then for the dy wedge dz part, notice we'll have h sub y minus g sub z. And like I said, that's going to be dy wedge dz. And then finally, for the last part, we'll have h sub x minus f sub z, and then dx wedge dz. Good. Okay, so this is the derivative of the one form, and notice it has turned it into a two form. Okay, great. So now let's move on to this two form. We should take the derivative of this and get a three form. So let's see what we get there. So d beta. So notice here we're going to have f sub x dx wedge dx wedge dy. So that's what we get from this first derivative. So we've got to do the partial with respect to x. But notice we can immediately zero that out because we've got two dx's wedged together. But we know again that this is an anti-commutative operator, this wedge product. So that cancels out immediately. In fact, everything is going to cancel except for the z component because the next one will have two dy's in it. So I'll just go ahead and write only that one. So that's going to be f sub z dz wedge dx wedge dy. And now the only one that we keep from here is the derivative with respect to y. And so that's going to give us plus g sub y and then we have dy wedge dx wedge dz. So we've got to make sure and do it in the correct order. We'll reorder it later though. 
Good. And then finally we have plus the derivative of h with respect to x, dh wedge dy wedge dz. That's the only thing that survives over there. So now let's see how we can reorder this. So notice that we'll move this dy past this dx and we'll pick up a minus sign. So this is going to turn into minus dx wedge dy wedge dz. But now in this case, we actually pick up two minus signs which cancel each other out. So this dz passes past the dx and we pick up a minus sign, but then it passes past the dy and we pick up another minus sign. So in the end, there's no minus sign and we can just put this in the correct order like alphabetical order, dx wedge dy wedge dz. And so now let's see what we have. So we're gonna have the partial of f with respect to z minus the partial of g with respect to y plus the partial of h with respect to x and then dx wedge dy wedge dz. And so we've done it. We've taken a differential two form and taken its exterior derivative to produce a differential three form. Now let's say we've got a three form, and this one's actually gonna be very quick because no matter what partial derivative here, we add something that is already part of this wedge product. So the derivative with respect to x will give us a dx wedge this whole thing, that's gonna be zero. Similarly for the partial with respect to y and the partial with respect to z. So we have in this case that d gamma is equal to zero. The derivative of three form on R3 is going to be equal to zero. Okay, so I think that's a good place to stop.